so if we, it's not particularly practical to use the moon as a stepping stone, uh, but people might still go there. And in fact, some people are planning to go there simply because it's an easy destination to do national pride. Trying That's to right. build a base on Mars would make much more sense, but it's going to be expensive and difficult, whereas bases on the moon might be feasible in the next five or 10 years. So, but should we do it? I mean, there's a one idea would be the environmental impact. There's certainly where humans go, we tend to trash places. Um, but to my mind, that's a less of an issue for the moon because the moon is such an awful wasteland already. That's right. You know, if there is anything living on the moon, which there isn't, uh, you're really limiting any impact. And, you know, the, the amount of ice we're talking about digging or helium-3 isn't going to dramatically change the landscape. Yes, you're going to put people and things on the moon, but we kind of already have the small effect. We already have stuff that we've littered on the moon. Now, that's not the best reason to say we've already done it, so it's OK. But we kind of already know some of these consequences. There will be an ethical and cultural issue yes. to it. I mean, the moon is a hu huge significance in most cultures on that's Earth right. for obvious reasons. And if it's only for national pride reasons, do we really have the right to take a pristine wilderness, albeit a god forsaken, a horrible pristine wilderness, and you put our boot prints over it, mine it. I mean, isn't that rather a human-centered point of view? Many cultures of the world would say that even though there's no life there, it is still has intrinsic value um, and we should not be trashing it for no particular reason. And, and I think this is a great argument. In some cultures, the moon actually has a physical identity and being to it. So, yes, yeah, he said, are we just going to kind of say, oh, that, that being doesn't matter? And it's one thing when we talk about down the road about mining asteroids, for instance, in all these arguments. But, okay, a nameless asteroid that you don't even know exists, that you've never seen, and really is no consequence, versus a moon that you may physically change its impact. This has to be part of the conversation of what the moon means, not to us using it for national pride, but what the moon means to humanity. And then, of course, there's the issue of colonization and maybe even conflict. I mean, one problem is that under the, as we talk about in the space law, no one's allowed to own the moon. So let's say you build a moon base and then another country comes and occupies it. Under what legal grounds can you evict them? That's right. Or what legal grounds can you uh, evict them and then get in trouble for evicting them? And, and then how does that also keep the interest? So are you going to always have someone there to, you know, put your shoulders out and your elbows out for your piece of land? Or, oh, Paul's now no longer on the moon. I may just go launch the moon and grab some of his fuel. And these are the sorts of issues that we have to be worried of. We've seen what conflict can do on Earth with, with fighting over resources. Is it going to extend to the moon? And what does that happen then to the moon and the consequences here on Earth? So, I mean, why would people fight over the moon? I mean, the moon is unlikely to be of any economic benefit. I mean, the minerals you can get from the moon, you can get much more cheaply from asteroids, as yep. we'll talk about later. So it's not clear to me that countries ever generally fight over worthless things. I mean. Humans are stupid and sometimes will fight over worthless things, but <laughs> it seems a bit perverse. The only situation I could see is where you fight is if multiple countries had moon bases, then somehow the Earth was cut off. Let's say we got the spaced junk yep. situation so bad, you'll talk about this cascade later in the course, yep. that no one could launch from the Earth. Then the moon might be the only game left in town. And it would be a very dramatic different game, right? You know, all of a sudden, your consequences of what that means is happening. But as you said, also with the colonization, you know, as... <laughs> Colonization rarely works out well here on Earth, right? You know, we, we're scientists. We've done that experiment multiple times. We kind of know the answer to that experiment. But normally we think of the bad effect of colonization as being the effects, A, on the environment, yes. but B, mostly on the people who are being That's colonized. Right. There are no people on the moon. That's right. And so maybe no colonization on the moon is not as bad as colonization on Earth. That's right, exactly. And, and so these are the sorts of considerations that we have to talk through and think about. And there are people who are talking through it and working out. And as you said, you can't just necessarily say, oh, the economics are so important. It's so clear the economics of our future of space travel rely on the moon without considering some of these other ideas.